Hi, I'm Papa Tone. Here are some examples of 3D prints that came off the FlashForge Adventurer 4 3D printer. This is the first print I pulled off the printer, the Staff of Ra from Indiana Jones. And as a first print, it was certainly fun. Uh, but if we take a closer look, you can see that right here in this area, there's a lot of weird stringiness happening, not very good definition. So. I went on a Reddit forum and a Redditor suggested that I print the Staff of Ra at a 45 degree angle. So I did. And I also put a shell on it and just did some general experimentation. And uh, I did get some better details. If you look here, you can see right here, these feathers are nice um, on the chest. These look a little better. Again, still a little rough. Certainly, you know, you could work with something like this. But uh, then another user suggested that I print standing straight up, basically with no supports. And so that's what we got here. I think I did put a few supports on this thing. But you can see we got a nice smooth print. Still no real details in the feathers. Uh, these lines here are nicer and more well-defined. So I think if I wanted to add the details in the feathers, I might have to carve them in or detail them in, um, which since this is just for fun, I'm not sure I will do at any point. But overall, uh, I think this was a really good first project to start with. Um, one of the nice details is that it comes with this middle section actually that you can put in between the other two. And you can put washers in here, which uh, gives the amulet a little more weight, which I think is kind of cool. So that was my first printing project. The, or was it the second? <laughs> I can't remember. So, and then this one was either first or second as well. Uh, this is the Maker Fair Maker Bot, which is a print in place project. If we take a look at him, uh, when he came out, he had uh, a fair amount of lines and striations. And I've been using him basically to practice filling in, using fillers for the first time, kind of sanding, trying to get a nice smooth finish for the first time, trying different kinds of fillers. This is a uh, wood filler that came from a tube. This is wood filler that came from a little pot. And then this is a mixture of both, I guess. So this was a big M. Um, that I filled in. I just wanted to get a nice flat surface and you can't really tell by looking at it, but if you touch it, like it's actually a pretty even surface. So he turned out pretty good and he continues to be useful. When he printed in place, uh, his head was not connected, unfortunately. He's supposed to print in place with a little um, support. <laughs> Well, that looks kind of wrong, but a little support that goes down there that holds the head on and spins. But uh, you can see with a little finishing, the Adventurer 4 gives you nice, smooth surfaces. I'd say there are probably two or three coats of spray uh, automotive primer on here. And uh, then just sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. And then I think 400 grit. Uh, something really rough like this, I would start with an 80 grit sandpaper, move to 20, and then some higher number than that to get a nice smooth finish. He did have some rough spots and some things that didn't get filled in by the printing process. Um, so he did need a fair amount of work and uh, I work on him from time to time when I just feel like I want to sit down and have a nice little meditative project. And he's a fun guy. He does. He does stand up. Let's see if we can get him to stand. He does a little marching, sort of standing type walk, kind of. <laughs> He's become sort of a little mascot in my shop. Next, I decided to make a project for my mom, who loves horses. The goal here is to come up with uh, smoothest finish possible. And so there's probably three or four coats of gray automotive primer on here. And then I finished with a Tamiya white fine primer. And you can see there's still some lines visible um, right here. And I did a little bit of carving with an X-Acto blade to keep his eye visible. 
to get definition in the mouth because the primer was filling in those details. Uh, but overall, he's mostly got a nice smooth finish. These legs did break off while I was sanding uh, because of a weakness in the model while it was printing. There was a little problem with resolution. And so while I was working, I leaned on these a little too hard with my hands and they just snapped off. So I came up with a little solution uh, to make that part of his story, uh, but that's not ready to be revealed yet. So check back some other day and you'll see what I did to uh, make that part of the horse's image. <laughs> I'm gonna finish him with a very fine um, sandpaper and then I'm gonna cover him, I think, with uh, gold leaf, which is something I've never done. So I think that'll be fun. And finally, this is the first large scale one piece print I did. This is the Free Range Chicken, which is a free file if you are a Patreon supporter of Craftsman, who is uh, one of my favorite makers and an inspiration and a great teacher online. So check his stuff out if you haven't seen it. Craftsman makes toys and models and all kinds of things. And, uh, and Free Range Chicken was one of his example toys that he made available to his supporters to be able to print out ourselves. So normally this would be, I think, maybe four inches tall or something, but I, I doubled his size and uh, he's, he's nice and big and came out pretty good. This is an example of what you'll find in a raw print. Um, I think I sanded a few things here, yeah. If you look here between uh, the feet, you can see that there's some little rough spots there. There was some bridging and sort of weird uh, strings between the two feet. Here you can see an example of 15% infill honeycomb. So that's what it looks like inside this whole figure. That's the support structure that uh, keeps them together. This took, I think, about 22 hours to print at a 0 0.15 layer height, if memory serves. Maybe it wasn't quite that long, but, uh, whoops. <laughs> it did take a while, and as you can see, it just survived a drop onto a hard concrete floor. So maybe we'll set him down <laughs> before we do any more damage. So as part of his STL, Craftsman included a jet pack for free range chicken. Uh, he's kind of a chicken astronaut, which is uh, why I dig him so much. I think that's uh, kind of hilarious and awesome as an idea. So we'll take a closer look here. Again, it's the same 15% infill. This only took, uh, I think, five or six hours to print. It has this little support on the back. So if you want to put free range chicken together, you just uh, take it and uh, Put it on his back, and then he can fly around. Craftsman's example here, I think might have been scanned from a handmade prop. I don't remember exactly, but it does have a nice organic look to it. I got the idea that maybe this would be a good opportunity for me to try my hand at uh, using Tinkercad to create my first prop or addition to an existing model. And so I made a bigger jet pack for the free range chicken. And this is my first example of a prop that I put together. Uh, it's got uh, two fins. It's got a little bit of an indentation down here to put some, uh, some engines in it or some, I don't know what you'd call the spouts <laughs> at the back of a uh, rocket and uh, and then I basically just took craftsman's support uh, from his engine <laughs> sorry that looks a little hilarious but um, and put it on here I just used Tinkercad to cut that little stick out of there and so that can mount to the free range chickens back and I lucked out in that his comb fits right between the rockets otherwise I would have had to file them down or something like that and if you look at the quality of the print this is a filament that came from Flashforge as far as the quality of the print you can see it's pretty solid we'll take a closer look here again zoom in 
It's got some kind of boogie there. Um, but it's very smooth. This is PLA filament. Generally, I print at 215 degrees for the nozzle temperature and 45, 55, or 65 degrees print bed temperature, depending on how hot it is in the garage because sometimes I do have trouble with uh, print adherence. And so I often will put a raft under my prints because that seems to be easy to spot if the print is having trouble grabbing onto the print bed. So you can see the lines there reflected in the light, but I think once I cover this with some primer, it'll be nice and smooth and ready to go. And again, I made my jetpack in Tinkercad which is a free program that uh, is sort of an entry level to get you turned on to Fusion 360. But for a beginner, I find it's a very solid program, easy to use. I haven't read any manuals or done, I think I've done two or three tutorials to basically get this modeled and then printed. So I still really am at the very beginning of any sort of technical knowledge of this process but I am able to model basic shapes and uh, get them out into the real world. So that's pretty good. And finally, my most recent print is the thermal detonator from Star Wars Return of the Jedi. This has had a little bit of finishing work done. I've removed the supports. And here you can see some of the problems that do sometimes show up. Right here, we've got a bit of a rough spot. Um, I used some bigger supports on this, so it's possible that when this printed, uh, some of this was printing in thin air, which is why I got these rough edges. But I, I tried to speed up the print a little bit, and uh, I paid a small price. But all of the errors are on the inside, and I think as a model it'll be just fine. I don't know if the switches will be functional, but we'll see. But the outside looks good, nice, smooth, well-defined. I definitely had to go in with an X-Acto blade and clean up under these notches. You can see here, this is a very rough surface and there was a lot more stuff in there. So this is the bottom half of the thermal detonator and it still has the supports attached. And you can see they're not the biggest supports in history. So I'm still not really sure where that rough spot came from in the top but uh, sometimes it happens and post-processing is definitely part of 3D printing life. So if you want to see what it's like to pull the supports off, this is a very handy tweezers that I picked up to make this process a little easier. It's got a nice long nose on it. You just kind of pull stuff off here and there. Get in there. And sometimes you get a nice big piece. Whoa. No. So that's an example of what that process is like. So I thought most of this might come out having been printed as kind of a bottom raft for the supports, but I don't think so. I think this is mostly part of the structure and this is just gonna have to be dealt with. I'll probably use a Dremel or something to get in there and sand most of that out because this is the inside. So we can clear this and have it be a little scuffed without worrying too much about who's gonna see it. But I will have to be careful. If you look, you can see this dark spot right here. Um, that's actually kind of transparent, I think. So if we look at the bottom, there's only a few layers of plastic between the very bottom and the outside. Let's see, if we turn this towards the lights, you can see the lights coming through the bottom of the casing which is probably not a great structural characteristic of an explosive that you carry around in your belt. But hey, it's just pretend, so we're all right. This is just a quick addendum. I did want to mention that the printer does well printing out tiny stuff too. These are some uh, random greeblies that I printed out and uh, you can see the detail is pretty darn decent on these very small pieces. And one other thing I did want to mention, the FlashForge Adventurer 4 does have a textured print bed, which can make the residue from prints rather difficult to remove sometimes. I haven't quite figured this out yet. I did make one huge mistake that I want to warn you about. I tried using some spirits to get it off a build plate previously, 
and basically ended up ruining that build plate because the mineral spirits just ate right through the textured print bed. So don't do that. You can certainly use a plastic scraper. Some people use metal scrapers and things. I haven't really figured this part of it out yet. The way I usually deal with it is heating up the print bed and then this gets a little bit more mushy and you can get it off. But you can see I have residue from previous prints that I haven't been able to remove. So that's something I'm still working on. Well, there you have it. Those are some examples from the first month's worth of output from my FlashForge Adventurer 4 3D printer. If you found this video helpful, remember to like yourself as much as you possibly can. Share your support and affection with everybody around you. Lord knows these days we need it. And subscribe to Periodicals of Note. Fill your head with good, solid, empirical information. I'm Papa Tone. Take care, everybody.